Plastic surgeons use several surgical techniques to repair problems with the nose. Now, a Beverly Hills plastic surgeon, Payman Simone, has a new twist to a crooked nose. As a rhinoplasty specialist, there are two things I do differently than other plastic surgeons. And this is one of the problems that a lot of people have when they contemplate rhinoplasty. They ask me, do you break the nose or do you pack the nose? And I always tell them, no. In my techniques, I do not break the nose and I do not pack the nose. And I believe those procedures should be antiquated by now. When I do my rhinoplasty, I use very small instruments. Rhinoplasty is one of the most difficult procedures of all plastic surgery procedures. And when you deal with rhinoplasty, you cannot deal with it anywhere else like in the body. That's not the way we have to handle rhinoplasty. It has to be done with a tiny, small instruments because every millimeter matters. The first thing I do is we'll set the patient to sleep. And when the patient is asleep, they can't hear anything, they can't feel anything. Then I make small incisions inside the nose and expose those cartilages that cause the nose to have either a bump on the nose or the white nose or whatever problem with the nose is. We expose those cartilages and I like to shape those cartilages. I do not like to remove cartilages because a lot of surgeons, they cut and remove cartilages inside the nose. Long-term results are bad because nose collapses, they get a pinched nose, they can't breathe. Those cartilages are for reason. So what I have done is that instead of cutting and removing those cartilages, I shape them. I use the same cartilages that the person has and I shape them so it will be more natural and the function of the nose doesn't change. The recovery is much easier if you don't break the nose, don't pack the nose and be very gentle with the nose. Most of my patients, they go back to the work or school seven days after. They don't get as much as bruising. They don't get as much swelling. They don't get as much as bleeding that people get with a traditional approach. We asked Dr. Simone for some before and after photos of some of his most recent cases. This is a beautiful woman with a very delicate face. The only thing that I see wrong with her face is the nose, which is a bigger for her face. It's kind of throw off her balance. Of in her facial features. So what I did for her is that I pushed the nose back into her face, relaxed it back, took the hump down, and that was it. She became absolutely gorgeous. This is a woman that has a nose that we call the droopy nose. It means that the nose looks like it's falling down and create a hook. In this case, I had to lift the nose up and bring the nose in towards her face so she doesn't look as big. And I took the little hump on top of her nose and made her nose completely perfect for her face. I had a patient by the name of Alex. She came to me, she had two rhinoplasties on her nose. She had a completely crooked nose by the end of the second rhinoplasty when she presented to me. She was the first doctor that I felt really confident like he he some of them were too eager to fix it some were scared because it was the third time and he was the first time first time that someone was patient and he had some hesitations but he also there was confidence there so i felt i felt really good and it was the best best thing i ever did it's very important for patients to know that most plastic surgeons they use their artistic judgment in their work and that's the easiest thing for patients to examine. They look at the doctor's before and after picture and to see if they agree with his artistic judgment. Always check the doctor's before and after pictures. If you don't agree with his artistic judgment, that's not the doctor for you.